Okay, so we'll um, we'll continue on in uh, in chapter four here. And we'll also uh, we'll do one one little uh, section in chapter five, but chapter four is all about the normal distribution. Okay, so we are going to do uh, we'll cover the normal distribution, and then uh, this week I'm assigning a lab assignment that uh, that you will have to work on, and uh, and so. Um, we'll, we'll also cover uh, using the uh, the computer program R to uh, to do some calculations and uh, basic data analysis. All right. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's talk about the normal distribution. Uh, the normal distribution it's a it's a distribution for a random variable. And it's continuous. Okay, so we've already covered uh, the distribution of a particular random variable uh, last week, and what was that one called? The binomial distribution. Okay, and uh, and the normal distribution and binomial distribution are actually connected, which uh, we'll see um, at at the end of uh, of today's or towards. I guess in the latter half of our of today's lesson, um, but the normal distribution it is a random variable. It's continuous, and it looks like this. It's what uh, some people, you know, colloquially call the uh, the bell curve. It's unimodal and symmetric. And what that means is that uh, data in the middle are more common. Okay, so values in the middle are most common. Okay, as indicated by you know the height in the middle in the middle of our data. So if if this is our middle, the uh, the hill is the tallest there. So indicating this is the most common, and then where um, the hill is quite low, that indicates these are uncommon or quite rare. So values that are uh, far above the the mean or the middle, and far uh, below the middle. So uh, values far from the middle, far above, or far below the middle are quite rare. And so throughout the um, the uh, the course, uh, we will we will be looking at a normal curve, okay? And what we say is that if if I shaded everything underneath the normal curve, the total area shaded would be one hundred percent, okay? So total area shaded or total area under the curve. is equal to 100% or just plain 1. Okay? And technically, the, uh, the normal distribution extends off to positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay? So uh, here it looks like it's touching, but it's really asymptotic in that it comes, gets closer and closer and closer to, uh, to 0, but it, it's technically not 0, meaning it's still possible uh, to get something that's extremely high above or high uh, far below okay but generally almost all of the time you're going to be um, not not out there okay and so um, to to kind of standardize uh, the normal distribution the standard normal,
distribution has a mean mu equal to 0 and standard deviation sigma equal to 1. Okay. So the standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and standard deviation equal to 1. So I can put the number 0 kind of right here in the middle. And, um, and we can talk about um, basically the, um, what we call standard units or z-scores. Okay, So a z-score, the definition of a z-score is the distance uh, measurement is from the mean expressed in standard deviations. Okay. So, you know, for example, let's say we have um, we're talking about human height. Uh, human height or we'll say height of adult males in the US. Okay, um, and it, it's fairly safe to say the mean is about 70 inches, and the standard deviation is about 3 inches. So for simplicity, we'll just use these nice, nice numbers without a bunch of decimals. Okay, and so if I say uh, a man is 6 foot 1 inch, or equal to 73 inches, what is his z-score? Okay, And so the z-score is the distance a measurement is from the mean expressed in standard deviations. So, so if the mean is 70 inches, how far above the mean is this man who's 73 inches? He's, he's 3 inches above the mean, which is one standard deviation. So this man's z-score, his z is equal to, we would just say plus 1, okay? Because z-scores can also be negative to indicate that someone's measurement is below the mean. Alright, so is this okay? Alright. Well, on the uh, standard normal, because the standard deviations themselves are one, um, you know any measurement that you ha and the mean is zero, the number is the z-score. Okay, so on the standard standard normal, if I'm out at one, the z-score is one. Okay, and if I'm at two, the z-score is two. Okay, so that's that's the nice thing about the standard normal. Where you are on the number line is your z-score if you are talking about the standard normal. Okay, and so um, you know the kind of the proportions regarding the hill look some, something like this. Okay. And so if I were to uh, draw a vertical line at zero. And if I were to shade everything to the left of zero, and I'll use a, where is my uh, color palette? So if I shaded everything to the left of zero, how much would I have shaded? 50%, okay? So at z equals zero, I have shaded 50%. Or I will just write shaded 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Is that okay? All right. Do you have your 
books and reference tables. If not, I can also show you a digital one on the screen. So I will do that also. I apologize for uh, forgetting to get these printed and, and bringing them here. Okay. So um, probably on the inside of your front cover, you have something that looks like this. Uh, let me something that looks kind of like this on the inside front cover, or um, I get if you have the fourth edition, maybe it's in the the very back of the textbook, uh, table three on page 616 or something like that. And uh, if you have, okay, you'll have a table that looks like this. So this is the, uh, the standard normal table. Okay, and so if you flip to the, uh, the second page of the standard normal table, in the top left corner, are, are we okay? In the top left corner, you will see the number 0.5, okay? So right here, whoops. Right here, we have the number 0 0.5. Okay, maybe I'll zoom in just one more. And we see that this is at the intersection of 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.00. So this basically means when Z is at 0, 0.00, the area you have shaded to the left is 0. 0.5. Is that okay? So uh, that's basically what, I, what we have uh, said here, and that is what our table says. So, um, you know, when we look at the table, this is called the, the standard normal table or the Z table. Or Z chart, okay. We are at 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.00, and we have this, okay? So this means at uh, Z equal to 0, 0.00, the area shaded to the left is 0.5, or 0. 0.5000 0, 0, if you want to keep it. And so if, um, you know what, let me, what's going on here? here and so uh, so this says you know I draw a line at uh, 0 0.5 and I shade everything to the left then the amount I have shaded I mean, if I draw a line at 0 I'm sorry the amount I've shaded is 0 0.50 okay uh, let's say I um, Let's say I move just over just a tiny bit, okay? And so now I'm drawing a, a line at 0. Point, let's say 0, 01, okay? And I shade everything to the left here. Okay? How much do you think I would have shaded now? Just just a tiny bit more than 50%, right? And we, we can look at the table and we go to that row 0, 0.0, but we go to the column 0, 0.01, and then uh, and the table says at 0, 0.01 you have shaded 0. 0.5040, okay? So 50.4%. So if we draw the line at 0, 0.01, 
So at z equal to 0 0.01, I have shaded 0 0.5040 uh, to the left. Is that okay? All right, and so you know now we can kind of do some arbitrary things. If I wanted to uh, go to, uh, let's say, so if this is one and this is two, you know, let's say I go right here. Okay, so this I'm going to draw a line at uh, z equals maybe one point two five. Okay, so I'm going to shade everything to the left of one point two five. How much will I have shaded? Yeah, so we would go to uh, the row 1.2 in the table, okay? And then I would go to the column where it says 0 0.05. And at that intersection, 1.2 and 0 0.05, I've shaded 0.8944. 0.8944. Okay, so if you know if I draw my line, my vertical line at z equal to 1.25, the area to the left is 0.8944. Okay, so that would be the, the kind of this orangish. Well, on the projection it looks brown, but on my screen it looks a little more orange. Um, and that would be the uh, the proportion that we have shaded. Okay, if the total area underneath the curve is one. Is that okay? All right. So let me just ask you this: How much is shaded in green? Yeah. So. So this would be, uh, yeah. How much is shaded green? This is, or basically that question is, how much is to the right? Of z equal to 1.25, and that answer is equal to what? One minus 0 0.8944. And what would we get? We would get 0 0.1056, I believe. Well, let me just double check. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Well, and here's an interesting thing. Okay, so if if anyone asks, you know, how much is shaded to the right of a number? So you say, how much is shaded to the right? of 1.25, you can look up 1.25 in the table, get 0.8944, and then do 1 minus that. Okay, and that's what we did here. However, because the, um, the thing is symmetric, okay, so because um, you know, our hill is symmetric, I can flip it around, okay, and it's, it's exactly the same. So the area to the right of 1.25, okay, would be uh, exactly the same as the area to the left of negative 1.25. Okay, so the area to the right of positive 1.25 is exactly the same as the area to the left of negative 1.25. Okay, so what we could do another way is we could just look up, so you know, area to the right of positive 1.25 is equal to the area to the left of negative 1.25. Okay, so um, this reference table always gives us the area to the left, and that's what that's what this picture in our uh, the table says. It basically says the area is always to the left. Okay. So the reference table always gives us the area to the left, but we can see that if I looked up area to the left of negative 1.25, indeed, 
I have 0 0.1056, which is what we found to be the area to the right of positive 1.25. Okay, and that and that work works um, for everything um, because it's symmetric. Is this okay? All right. Um, let's uh, let's keep trying here. What if I present this, okay, and I say I have drawn a uh, a bar. I don't know, like uh, right here, okay. I don't know, somewhere, okay. And I'm gonna shade everything to the left. And I'm gonna say the amount I have shaded, this shaded area, equals 0 0.94, okay? And I'm gonna ask, um, Where, uh, where is this line? So where did I draw this line so that the shaded area is equal to 0 0.94? Is it 1.56? Okay, okay, uh, probably. Well, I, 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 let's give, uh, we'll give the rest of the class an opportunity to, uh, Yeah, well, maybe so. Maybe there's some controversy here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the shaded area is 0 0.94. You know, where did I draw this line so that the shaded area is 0 0.94? Okay. So in this case, um, what we're doing is, you know, we go to our z table. Okay. You know, 0.0 and 0. You know, 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. All of this. We're not going to look up 0.94, okay? That would be the wrong thing to do, okay? What we're going to do is we're looking for the value that's closest to 0.94 in all of these numbers, okay? So we don't go to the edge, we don't go to the row 0 0.9 and the column 0.4 and say 0.8264. That's the wrong thing to do. What we're going to do is we're going to look through all of these numbers, okay? And they're, um, it's in order, so it's fine. We're going to go through all of these numbers, and we're going to look for the number closest to 0.94, OK? And we see there's two numbers, 0.9394 and 0.9406, OK? If, there's two num if it's between two numbers, which is almost always the case, um, I say, well, pick the number that's closer, OK? But here, you know, here we're faced with a slight predicament in that they are both equally close to the number, OK? So in that case, it doesn't really matter. The, probably the true answer is going to be halfway between um, 0.95 and 0.96. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, one, I'm sorry, 1.55 and 1.56. So that's probably you know 1.555. But uh, but the uh, but if you pick either of those, that's fine. Okay. So uh, you know we look at this and we get 0.9. 394, 0 0.9406. 0 0.9394 corresponds to 1.55, and this one corresponds to 1.56, right? These are these are in the row where it says 1.5 in the columns. If we uh, we go to the top, it's not 0 0.03, but rather 0 0.05 and 0 0.06. So you know, um, so either uh, or any any of these answers are acceptable. <coughs> Z equal to one point five five, one point five six, or one point five five five. Okay, but generally. Uh, generally, most of the time, um, it will be closer to one number rather than the other, and I just say go with that one, okay? You don't have to try to figure out 
what number it is in between. Okay, so usually just go with the number that's closer. This is okay. All right. Let's see. Um, let's go back to our definition of the z score. And let's see if you guys can come up with a formula for it. I mean, it's given in the book, but try not to look at the book to get this answer. Let's see if we can, we can think through it and come up with a, a formula for the z score. Okay? So, what is, what is a z score? A z score is um, basically. The z score of a measurement measurement is how far that measurement is from the mean expressed in standard deviations. Okay, or you can also just say, how many standard deviations are we from the mean? Okay, that may be a little bit shorter. Okay, so see if you can come up with a formula for a z score. Okay, so we'll say, you know, your measurement, you know, if you want symbols. Your measurement will be, uh, we'll say y. What is the symbol that we use for mean? Mean of a random variable? Yeah, mu. Uh, what's the standard deviation of a random variable? Sigma, OK? So can we come up with a formula for z? Don't, don't shout it out. See if you can, you can write something. We want to. We want to and I mean, you can look in your book too, but try not to. See if, let's see if we can go from this definition of a z, z score, to, uh, to how we would calculate it. Okay. okay. All right, well, well do, we, do we have a, any. Uh, X, yeah, y minus mu over sigma, x minus mu over sigma, right. So, and that's, that's what we have. So we're going to take this thing. So we want to say, how far is the measurement from the mean, right? So the distance the measurement is from a mean, it's just going to be y minus mu. And we just take that distance. But we don't want it just straight up. We want it expressed in standard deviation. So we're going to just divide it by the size of each standard deviation, right? And so, you know, um, when we had the uh, the height example earlier, we said something that you know, like the uh, the mean height of males of adult males is seventy. The standard deviation is three. Okay. So you know, I said, what's the z-score for you know? someone who's 73 inches. And I think this, in this case, it was clear enough that this one would be z is equal to plus 1. But I think inside our heads, we were effectively just uh, doing y minus mu over sigma, which is 73 minus 70 divided by 3, which gives us one. OK. So then if I said, you know, what's the z-score of a man who is 5 foot 5, what would you say? So 5 foot 5 would be 65 inches. OK. 
Okay, so this one, I think, simple enough. We do y minus mu, 65, minus the mean, 70, divided by 3. So we would get negative 5 over 3, so negative 1.667. Okay, um, you know, and if we have to look it up in the table, if I then wanted to say, uh, okay, well, um, so this is our z-score, and so this is the, uh, I guess this is the power of turning things into z-scores, is that if we know something has a normal distribution, they all have uh, the same proportions when, when things are turned into z-scores, okay? So, you know, on the previous slide, we were just talking about, you know, using this standard normal table and, you know, what, uh, you know, at 1.55 or whatever, we have like 94% or something like that, okay? If we're talking about the height of males, if we turned, turned their heights into z-scores, we get the exact same proportions. So if, if there's a man who has a z-score of 1.55, then that means he is taller than 94% of other men, okay? So, um, so we, can, uh, we can try this out, all right? So, um, so I'll, I'll draw this, okay? So that, and then I'll just kind of reiterate this. So um, all normal distributions have the same shape. the same shape, they may have different means and standard deviations. Okay. But if we, uh, we convert all of our measurements to z-scores, okay, we can use the standard normal table, you know, to, uh, you know, find proportions and areas. Okay, so uh, so, you know, we'll continue with our example, and we will say uh, the mean height of U.S. males, 70, the standard deviation of the height of U.S. males is 3, okay? So if there's, uh, so these tick marks in the diagram are at one standard deviation, so this would go up to 73, 76. 79, and this would go to 67, 64, 61, okay? So, you know, I say, um, what percent of adult males in the U.S. are shorter than, what did I say, 65 inches? So what we would do is we would convert 65 to a z-score. z is equal to y minus mu over sigma. 65 minus 70 over 3 gives me negative 1.667, OK? So if you're faced with a question like this, what percentage of adult males in the U.S. are shorter than 65 inches? And we know this, the mean height of U.S. males is 70, standard deviation is 3, and you know, the height of males follows the, uh, a normal distribution. So we convert this to a z-score, and then we would just look up that z-score. 
look up the z-score in the table. Okay, but the table only goes to uh, two decimals of precision, so um, you know you will will need to round the z-score to two decimals. Okay, so we look up z equal to negative one point six seven. And the value I get when I look up negative 1.6 and go over to 7, 0 0.0475. 0 0.0475. So this says, the table says 0 0.0475. OK? So just kind of illustrating our thing, 65 would be something like here. 65, 66, and if I shade this area, how much have I shaded? This shaded area according to our table is equal to 0 0.0475. This is the area shaded to the left. And then so let's look at our question, which says, what percentage of males, of adult males in the US are shorter than 65 inches? Does that correspond to this shaded area? Yes, yes, because shorter than 65 means 65 or lower. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, so this corresponds to, uh, to the diagram here. And so our answer would be about 4.8%, you know, a little bit less than 5%. You know, 4.75%. So, you know, about about 5% if uh, it's probably probably fine. Okay. Does that feel okay? All right. So, let's uh, let me try giving you guys a few problems here. Uh, just see if we uh, we can handle this. Okay, so I will make something up. Um, I don't know. Actually, I can't think of anything. Well, how much does a uh, what is the average weight of a bull? Probably a lot. Twenty four hundred. 100 pounds. That's pretty heavy. OK. Um, what if bulls were like not friendly? Well, I guess they're not, huh? But <laughs> all right, OK. So we'll say, or they were carnivorous. Oh my gosh. OK. Um, so average, uh, so we'll say the mean weight, mean weight of a male bull. Well, I guess all bulls are male, so we'll just say mean weight of a bull of a male man is uh, is equal to uh, 2,400 pounds. I'm going to completely make up the standard deviation because I don't think that will be available. I could say, you know, standard deviation of the weight. Yeah, that's not going to, yeah, not going to show up. So, okay, so we'll say standard deviation is... Blah, 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 blah. 160 pounds. I'm making this up. I have no idea. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll ask you a, a series of questions. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll give you three of these. Uh, all right. So I will say, uh, so question A, and we'll, we'll see if we can do this. Okay. So A, um, what percent of bulls? Weigh less than uh, two thousand pounds. I don't know. So it's like you've got a truck; it can carry at most one ton. What percentage of bulls can you carry in your truck? I don't know. This. 
<laughs> These are silly questions. Okay, uh, B, um, what percent of bulls weigh more than, we'll say, 2,500 pounds? And C, okay, we'll, we'll do this. And what percent of bulls weigh between 2,000 and 2,500 pounds? Okay, and so in our diagram, I'm going to put 2,400 in the middle for all of these, and I'll let you guys uh, work on this. Okay, so we'll, uh, I'll pause the video here if you're watching on YouTube, um, and when I resume the video, we're going to go over the answers. Okay, so what percent of bulls weigh less than uh, 2,000 pounds? We would uh, first convert 2,000 into a z-score. So we would say z is equal to 2,000 minus 2,400 divided by 160, and we would get a z-score of negative 2.5. Okay? And so I would look that up, and if I, if I were to draw this, that brings me out to all the way over here. Um, and shading everything beyond there. This little bit over here, when we look, um, and the, the Z table says the area to the left is equal to 0 .0062. So what percentage of bulls weigh less than 2,000 pounds? Less than 1%, only, you know, 0.62 of a of a percent, 0.62 percent. So that's that's this little piece. Right. Is uh, is that okay? All right. Um, so that, yeah, this is at 2,000. Uh, if I draw a line at uh, 2,500, I would be somewhere uh, like uh, right here. Okay. What percentage of bulls weigh more than 2,500? I would say. Z is equal to 2,500 minus 2,400 over 160, and I get 0 0.625. So here you got to just round off. So we're going to look up Z equal to 0 0.63, um, and we would see the area to the left at 0 0.63 is 0.7357. Okay, so the area to the right, which is the area that I'm going for, so if I, uh, if I shade this in over here, the area to the right would be 1 minus 0.7357. And I would get 0.2643. Okay, and this would be my answer. 0.2643, or 26.43 percent. Conversely, I could have also, you know, shortcut just look up z equal to negative 0.63. Also, would give us 0.2643 as the area to the left. Okay, and so this last question says. Uh, you know, what percent of bulls weigh between uh, 2,000 and uh, 2,500 pounds, okay? So this one, I can kind of treat as a combination of the previous two answers, okay? So basically, I, I'm going for the area in between. But I, I know how much is to the right, and I know how much is to the left, and I know everything has to add up to 1, right? So it's basically, you know, shaded area plus, I should, uh, okay, so the shaded area plus, you know, area to the left of 2,000 
plus area to the right of 2,500. All of this equals 1. Yeah? OK, so here I'm going to have, you know, I'll have area equals, and then I add these two together, point, oops. So I'll just say plus point zero zero six two plus point two six four three equals one. And so, you know, just some simple algebra. This gives me that the area equals, you know, I'm gonna just do one minus point oh oh six two minus point two six four three and I get point seven two nine five. Another way, you know, um, if, if we didn't, uh, you know, bother with this, you know, I could just look up this number, 0 0.7357, and I could subtract off 0 0.0062. So 0 0.7295, this is also equal to 0 0.7357 minus 0 0.0062. Yes? Um, for number, or for B, uh -huh. could you also um, take, like, Oh yeah, yeah. If you because it's at 0.625, yeah. yeah, you could you could take the average of 0.63 and 0.62, the the areas to the left of those. Okay, that's that's perfectly valid. It's probably going a a step beyond to get an even more accurate answer. But you know, when you're using a table, it, it's just uh, if you're trying to get something super precise, table is not the way to go. Okay, um, table. Because it, you know, it only goes to two decimals of precision. Whatever, it's fine. Okay, um, you know, uh, if you use a computer program, you can get a lot more uh, stuff. But I think just kind of getting the at the concept of you know how the standard normal works and the the z scores work um, is good. So um, why don't we take a short break here, ten minutes, and then um, and then we'll finish talking about the normal distribution and we'll introduce a, a few other things and then we'll talk about R.